Hey guys, let's talk about Narset Transcendent. This card is a card I loved around six or five dollars. I've always been a big believer, unless the Planeswalker is utterly terrible, like Kiora, Omnixilis, or even something like uh, Tailbolt, the Planeswalker at five or six dollar cost. Not too bad because eventually an EDH deck will want it, or I'll see some play modern, and what's happening with Narset is both. Atraxa really likes Narset, it's a good card in that deck, and more to the point, Modern is experimenting with it as a free of in various blue-white builds. Uh, these are not tier 1 decks, these are not tier 2 decks, these are just creative builds, and that itself is enough to pretty much double its price overnight. If we look at October, let's say November, end of October, it was a all-time low of $6 due to rotation. Uh, $6 here means you can pick it up on eBay for 5 or and you can probably pick it up and trade for $6. So it's pretty low entry point for a card like this. Now, why do I like Planeswalkers at $5? It's just, there's no downside in my opinion. There's just no downside to it. Do I like Planeswalkers at $20? No, because then you have a lot of downside, right? So $5 Planeswalker... If it stays at $5 forever, that's probably still okay because you can trade it away. It's extremely liquid, extremely tradable. Narset fits those categories. He is a very, very beautiful planeswalker uh, in terms, and her foil is gorgeous. So, you know, I, I don't know. I might pick up another foil version of her. I have the original foil that I opened on the channel. But Narset Transcendent, a very unique card. When you're looking at Planeswalkers, when you look at cards, I just look at how unique this card is. I compare it to every other card that I know of, and I say, huh. It does something very interesting. Why it's not, why its price has never been extremely high is due to the fact it cannot protect itself. So if you play it and you don't have creatures to block, or you play it and you don't have counters, you're not going to have counter spell magic up. Planeswalkers, you want to play as early as possible, but you need to protect them. So the better Planeswalkers, they protect themselves. Jace, you can return a creature to its owner's hand. Uh, Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, you can get a plant token to protect yourself. Gideon, you can grab a 2-2 token, a knight token. So an Elspeth is probably the ultimate example. You get free bodies to block and then to keep creating bodies. So at the end of the day, Narset is... Her main weakness is she cannot protect herself, but she is extremely strong in the correct decks. I like it. I like, I've always liked her. Uh, and when she hit the five, six dollar mark, I felt like it was a very, very good buy at that point in time. And it obviously now that she's 14, it's probably too high. So probably settle around $10. That's the story of the five dollar planeswalker is I've never had a bad experience because what, let's say you buy a five dollar planeswalker, what's the worst that can happen? Like it becomes four dollars like the downside is very minimal the upside is very high um if we look at nissa and we look at sahili obviously they're in standard so their upside is a little higher so if i were to pick a planeswalker and it was five dollars i would want to pick one in standard five dollars rather than one in modern because modern is so harder to make an impact and largely if you haven't made an impact in standard it's not likely you would make an impact in modern so like Sahili and Nissa, those were two very clear picks because there's no downside or there's very little downside. Uh, and there's a tremendous upside, much more for Sahili because he's not in a dual deck than Nissa who is in a dual deck. Uh, but even Narset, five, I mean, when it's $5, you just got to take a look at it. There's some core philosophies that I always abide to. One is Dual lands, if you can never trade for a dual land, that's what you need to trade for because they're extremely liquid assets. Two planeswalkers at lower end prices tend to have a bottom. Uh, yes, Tilbolt, Obnix, Kiora, there's some exceptions to what I just said, but largely they will always have casual appeal and I value how easy is it, is it for me to trade it away to a casual player way beyond what the card is worth. So I would much rather have 4 or $5 Planeswalker than a $20 Planeswalker. Now that's not always the case as Lily of the Veil vale was $20 at one time. She, I think she was 15 at one time, but largely the case. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you have some Narsets and they are your favorite card because Narset definitely is one of mine. Anyway, bye guys.